Getting into the new year is always a time when we want to be thinking about meals, about fresh starts, about being organized. So I have a very special guest for you to help with new year meal planning. I've got Cassie Eichley on the call today. Cassie is an expert when it comes to meal planning, to cooking, feeding a family and simplifying your life. And she's going to show us how to approach plant-based meal planning. Let's dive in, friend. I'm Dr. Ryan Williams, your host and the founder of Growing Pure, where I help you make vegan cooking and health fast, simple, and mind-blowingly tasty. So Cassie is a full-time mom to three kids aged eight, five, and one. And when she became a mom, she knew she didn't want her life to be chaotic and stressful. She wanted to enjoy her time being a mom. So she decided to streamline her home, which she did, and she took back seven extra hours of her life every single week. Now she teaches other moms how to make their lives easier so they can get seven extra hours a week as well. And so today she is going to show us her approach to meal planning. Welcome, Cassie. It's fantastic to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, and I'm really excited to be doing this. This is actually our, our second collaboration. Uh, we did a video all about quinoa throughout the day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And there will be uh, a link to that in the description below and up here, somewhere, one of these sides. <laughs> Yeah, so it was so much fun to do, and I, I use those recipes still. It was such such good recipes and so easy for moms who want to make their lives easier. Yeah, it's it was really, really great. It was a lot of fun, and uh, certainly quinoa in place of like oatmeal for breakfast. I love that. I, I keep doing it. So, Cassie, obviously, this channel is all about vegan cooking and health. So, where what was your, how did you learn to cook, I suppose? So yeah, I learned to cook from my parents. My mom is amazing at looking at a recipe, reading through it and knowing if it'll be good or not. Uh, she's a very by the book type of cooker. So I learned how to do that from her. And then my dad is the complete opposite. He never follows a recipe. He will just look in the pantry and the fridge and go, you know, I think we could do fill in the blank with whatever he's thinking of at the time. So I, I learned to cook alongside both of them and now I kind of do my own hybrid, um, a little bit of both. I, I usually start with a recipe and then be a little bit creative from there. Yeah, I mean, that's really nice. Like I find recipes can be a great jumping off point and I do use them particularly when, you know, something's a little bit more technical or I want to kind of push my creativity in different directions. But most of the time I'll just kind of shoot from the hip and, and make up a new a new recipe kind of as I go. I think it's really helpful to have those those food principles in place, if you like. Yes. And, and knowing how to change something just a little bit is really helpful too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm not quite as creative as my dad is where he can just come up with something from nothing, but uh, it's, it's nice to be able to do both. For sure. And so when it comes to plant-based cooking specifically, obviously you cook for, for a family. So what's your, what's your approach to that? Yeah, so we are, I would say, mainly plant-based, but we do eat eggs and we do eat honey, so we're technically not vegan. Uh, but it, it's often easier just to tell people that we're vegan versus explaining everything. Um, and then we also don't do any refined sugar. So if I need to sweeten something, I use honey or dates or a date puree or something like that, or fruit. Fruit is really great for sweetening as well. No, I, I totally see what you mean there. And I really try and limit those sort of, you know, overly refined uh, sugars and that kind of thing. Fruits are, are great, especially dried fruits, because you get that, that real burst of, of sweetness, but you get all the other goodness, those phytonutrients, that fiber from the fruit as well. Right, yeah, especially getting that fiber in with the sweet helps your blood sugar not spike and things like that, which I think is really helpful with having kids. You know, if you give them too much sugar, then they're hyper and, and just giving them the whole fruit instead of even fruit juice just helps them be a little bit calmer and uh, have a little bit more self-control. So I think it's a, a good thing to try to do. Yeah, and, and I, that's really interesting because, you know, physiologically we see that, that massive difference. when 
you have a, a piece of fruit and it's all wrapped up with that that fiber in the water you get this much more gentle rise and fall in blood sugar and then the ensuing insulin response is similarly more gentle than if you you know have a, a, a juice or sort of a candy bar or something and it's all just you know a big spike uh, so yeah I could definitely see with kids how that's important <laughs> yes so what kind of challenges do you come across when you're you're cooking for a family and, and how have you overcome that? Uh, so a big challenge is time. When you add even just one extra person, if you have one child in your family, you have a whole extra schedule that you have to juggle, a whole extra person that you have to take into account for. I know whenever my parents have the kids for a weekend, my husband and I are like, where, where is all this time coming from? We have so much more time now. So uh, time is a big one. Figuring out you know, when to meal plan, when to eat, when to start cooking. And there's just a lot of different moving parts when you have a family. Um, another preference that you have to figure out when you have a family is everyone's preferences. And especially if you have picky eaters, that can be a real challenge depending on if you and your spouse have different preferences. So that's a whole nother thing that you have to keep in your mind when you are meal planning for a family. Another challenge is health, making sure that what you're making is healthy and delicious at the same time. That's one reason I love your channel because you are making healthy food mind-blowingly delicious. And that's a big challenge to try to make healthy food palatable, especially to children. Um, I do think it is a little bit easier when they don't have that refined sugar because they aren't used to the really sweet. Uh, so things like broccoli and, and the more bitter foods like kale aren't as repulsive to them and they're more interested in trying it. But definitely you have to keep into account over a week, are they getting all of the things that they need to be getting and is everyone getting what they need health wise? Yeah, that, that's really interesting that you, you say that because I certainly find that people can have the knowledge sometimes and they know what's healthy and what's not, but but usually people just tend towards what tastes good. So, you know, and I certainly found this, you know, I, I worked uh, as, a, as a food scientist in a food company and we'd see this time and time again, people would, would have, we, they would have genuine preferences about, you know, the attributes of the, of the product, maybe it was organic they cared about or, or the packaging, whether it was recyclable, that kind of thing, but it, taste always comes first. And, and that was what we find, and even in our, our own lives. So I think getting that, that healthy, delicious, nourishing food to, to really satisfy us as well is, is the key to, to making it stick, to make it a sustainable habit. And then the last challenge that I face, and I think just about every mom faces as she is meal planning, is the budget. You know, the healthier food does tend to get a little bit more expensive. If you get a lot of boxed macaroni and cheese, it's just cheaper. So trying to balance not having the processed food with your budget and finding ways that you can maximize the food that you're getting while also maintaining the health and everyone's preferences and kind of all four of those things together is definitely a challenge. Yeah, for sure. And and I think, you know, you see these, the kind of bulk staple foods, the, the corn, the beans, the potatoes, the rice, they're fairly cheap, but on their own, they're not gonna taste that great, right? So, so you need those, you know, those lovely herbs and spices, maybe you have some berries, fruits, but then, yeah, the, the cost starts coming up a little bit. So yeah, really getting that budget right is super important. So why is meal planning important in your life? So that's what we're talking about here, but, but why have you found it's, it's made a real difference? Well, meal planning really helps me solve all four of the problems that I just talked about. It saves so much time. When I originally was meal planning every single week, I would spend anywhere between 30 and sometimes 60 minutes figuring out what I wanted to make that week. And then you still had to go to the store and all of those things. And people tended to get more frustrated because maybe you didn't pick their favorites that week. And the way that I meal plan now that we're going to talk about in a little bit, it's it's much easier because I decide everything way ahead of time. And if somebody doesn't like something on the menu, I just say, oh, sorry, that's what's on the menu this week. Maybe you'll like what's next week, you know? And it, it kind of takes away that frustration a little bit. Oh, it's, it's out of my hand. Sorry, it was already on the menu. Um, it definitely makes it cheaper also because I can kind of coordinate between the weeks, uh, making sure that let's say one recipe calls for half of a butternut squash. 
Well, if you don't have your meals all coordinated, then maybe you're wasting half a butternut squash. But when you plan everything out and work everything together, I can make sure I'm using everything that I buy and using meals with coordinating fruits and vegetables together in the same week so I'm not wasting food. Yeah, food waste is something that, that really bothers me and, and, and I really try and avoid it, but I do end up, you know, freezing some, you know, half a bus not squash exactly. And, and you, you end up putting it in a meal where it's, it's fine, but it probably could have, been, could have been better. I'm fortunate enough to be in the position where I can kind of decide to make something and then the people that I, the, the, my guests or whoever I serve it for just has to deal with it. <laughs> but I imagine with kids, that's a little bit harder. <laughs> Uh, it is, but you know, they learn to deal with it too. You have to, they, they have to learn that food costs money and also the time. You, I don't have time to cook multiple meals for everybody and we can't afford to just throw out good food. So they learn, they have to figure things out and, and eat what is healthy and what's prepared for them. And you know, it, it all works out. <laughs> all right. So I believe we are going to be lucky enough for you to show us your approach to, to meal planning today and you have a sort of a, a plan, a checklist that you follow. Is that right? Yes. And I will be providing the checklist link for you. If anyone wants to follow along, you don't have to take notes or remember everything I say. It's all in the checklist and you can follow along with that. It will be in the description and we'll pop a picture of it into the video so you can see what that will look like. And also, if you want any more details about the things that I'm talking about today, I have a full playlist that goes into a lot of detail. I have a full video on every single step that I'm going to talk about. So I'll just be giving the overview today to give you an idea to see if this meal planning might work for you. So the first thing that you want to do when you are figuring out a more simplified meal plan is you want to start with breakfast. At least that's where I start. It's the beginning of the day. It just makes sense. And I recommend going very simple with your breakfasts. I'm not somebody that has tons of energy or time in the morning, and you have a lot of things that you want to get to throughout the day. So it's good to have something that is easy to make and also easy to clean up. So what I recommend doing is choosing one of three options when it comes to your breakfast. The first option would be to have five days of the week, the weekdays that are all the same. This is actually what we do at our house. We eat hot cereal every weekday. And then on the weekends, we will do things that are a little bit more creative, take a little bit more time because then my husband's off work and he can either help with the cooking or help with the kids. And we just have a little bit more time. So that's one option if you want to be just very simple with your breakfasts. Another option though, a lot of people like a little bit more variety is you can do an every other day approach. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday would all be the same thing. And then Tuesday and Thursday would be something different. And then again, weekends would be a little bit more interesting if you want. And then the last approach, I, I had a friend who actually told me, boy, if I did my breakfast the way you did, I would be so bored. So somebody like that would want to choose seven different breakfasts and you have a different one on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then once you've figured out how much variety you want within each week, you'll need to decide, do you want to repeat this rotation every single week. So have a one week rotation. And again, this is what I do. I like breakfast to be super simple. So every week is just about the same, except for the weekends, or you could have a two week rotation and you could alternate between one week and then the next week and go back and forth that way to add just a little bit of variety, but still having it really predictable. Or if you're somebody that wants a lot of variety, you could do a four week rotation. But the beauty of having these rotations is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single week and it makes your grocery shopping a lot easier. So then once you have your breakfast figured out, you want to move on to your lunches, right? That's the next logical place to go from there. And I recommend doing the same thing. Figure out if you want to do five simple lunches. Again, I recommend going super simple with lunch. You're busy in the middle of the day, especially if you have kids, you're running around different appointments, different activities, and it's good to just have something really predictable. So we do this, we do the same basically every single week during the weekdays is leftovers for us. This is a great way to eat those leftovers and have less food waste. It's very simple to get out, very simple to clean up, and it's just a really good 
meal. But if you need more variety, again, you can choose to have Monday, Wednesday, Friday something, maybe like soups. You could make a big crock pot of soup on Sunday. And then Tuesday, Thursday, maybe you do sandwiches or something else that's simple. Or again, if you would be very bored with that and you need a lot of variety, choose seven different lunches that you can have. And then same thing, you can put that on either a one week rotation and repeat that every single week, a two week rotation where you're going back and forth, or a four week rotation if you want a lot of variety. So that's, that's breakfast and lunches. Do you have any questions before I keep moving on here, Ryan? Yeah, I just, I, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me. I always, I think, Personally, I tend towards the the really simple breakfast is pretty much the same for me every weekday. Lunch, I maybe do two or three, but yeah, I think you know as much as you can remove that friction when you're when you're busy and you've not got a lot of time, you just want to make things like healthy eating as simple and delicious as you can. So I think just choosing something that you like, you know everyone likes, and you can make quickly and easily makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So then moving on to snacks, if you have kids, you probably want to have a snack time. Our kids usually have a snack between three or four in the afternoon. And snacks is actually the meal that I don't plan. So you can do the same thing that I just described with breakfast and lunch and have a rotation and easily put that on your shopping list and make it really simple for you. But for us, snacks is actually the one meal a day that my kids get to choose what they want to eat. So I have on hand veggies and hummus or fruit and peanut butter or maybe some crackers and hummus or in the summer usually I will make a whole bunch of zucchini muffins and freeze those and they can thaw those out if they'd like. So I just have several healthy options and generally I will just give them an option when they say they are hungry for their snack. So you can do that however you would like. Just make it nice and simple on yourself so that it's not one more thing that you're having to figure out every day. And then dinner is where things get exciting, at least for me. This is the part that I kind of enjoy about meal planning a little bit more because dinner is when the whole family comes together and I want to spend a little bit more time preparing it because I want it to be a special family time. It's not a time of day where we're just trying to rush through it. We want to have those memories of eating delicious food together as a family but I still want to streamline it so that I'm not spending all of my time in the kitchen either cooking or cleaning or meal planning. So how I do this is I have theme nights. I use a theme night for every single night of the week. And then for an entire calendar year, that is the theme night. So for Sunday, it will have a specific theme night. Um, this last year, it was family favorites that take a little bit more time to make because again, we have more time on the weekends. Monday, it was quicker family favorites because it's a weekday and we have a lot of things going on. Tuesdays have often been a vegan macaroni and cheese for us. Friday is one of our favorites. That has been the same theme night for a long time. We call it build it meals. So it's meals like falafels or tacos or burritos or burgers or something where each person is kind of curating their own dish however they would like it. So I actually have another video we could maybe pop in the description down below um, that is 50 different theme night ideas. And you can choose if you want something that is going to be more time intensive, maybe you have a night where you don't have much going on and you want to spend that time making a meal with your family, do a more time intensive theme night for that night. And if you have, like we have swim team for our kids a lot of nights of the week, so we have to do some that are more quick, uh, then you can choose a more simplified theme night. So then once you have your theme nights figured out, you'll want to decide which meals belong in that theme night and create yourself a little rotation. All of your rotations don't have to be the same length. Some of mine are the same meal every week and some have 10 different meals in them. So just write down whichever meals you would like to go with that theme night. And then the last step that I do for my meal planning is I get out my calendar for the next year and I fill in my entire calendar with my dinner rotations. It takes me between two and four hours and that is all the meal planning that I do for the entire year. It is all set when I am done. So you can do this multiple different ways. Sometimes I'll choose the two easiest, like one night of the week I have leftovers usually and another night I will do just the same meal every night of the week for simplicity's sake. And I'll go through the whole calendar putting those two nights of the week in the calendar. And then I'll generally work up to usually the Friday night, the build it meal 
sales because we have the most variety in that one. And I'll just go through and every Friday, maybe the first is falafels, the second is sushi, then burritos, then burgers, and I'll just write it all in. Then when it comes to needing to make my grocery list for whatever week it is, it's all set and I don't have to do anything with it. Unless maybe I'm having company and I know something we're having maybe wouldn't be their favorite. I'll cross it out, I'll switch things around, but typically it's just already done for me and it saves me so much time throughout the year. What I love about Cassie and the way she approaches this is just like, she makes something to me that seems quite daunting and there's, there's a lot to think about and she makes it really simple. She plans it out, but makes it fun as well. <laughs> like that sounds really doable, right? Like I don't think anyone could do that. And you should definitely go and check out Cassie's channel because so many of her videos are really, really great at just simplifying things, making a clear plan that you can follow when you're busy and stressed. I'm not a busy mom, but even I love following the tips that she provides. So definitely go and check it out. But thank you so much for that, Cassie. That was really, really cool. Yeah, no problem. And like I said, that was just a big overview. If you want more details, I have a full video on how to do the breakfast, full video on how to do the lunches, full video on the theme nights, things like that. So we can link that down below. And if you want to really follow the process, you can watch those videos and it just lays everything out for you. For sure. And I, I love the idea of the theme nights, right? And I think I, when I was a, a kid, I remember my mom kind of doing that, but, but not really. And when, you know, like Mexican kind of food, we have fajitas and that sort of thing. And it was really, really cool. And then what I tend to find now is I, I sometimes forget about them and, and then I don't come back to them for a few months. And I think, oh, I kind of wish I, I'd had a bit more of that. So I think that structure is, is a really nice way of one, just revisiting foods that you know you, you like and you want to include more, but also just, uh, yeah, getting things planned out, not getting frazzled and stressed. Yeah, perfect. Well, it makes it easier for the meal planning process because one of the reasons it's so daunting and people don't like meal planning is because you'll look up recipes and there are 3000 ideas that you can choose from and taking and saying, okay, no, this theme night is Mexican food. Okay, now you've just narrowed down the field of what you may want to make and it's easier to make that decision. And the other reason I think planning out your whole year is actually easier than planning out your week is I don't know what I'll be in the mood for in May. So it's really easy to make that decision and say, okay, we're gonna do this this week and I don't have to sit there and think, oh, do I want to make this? And, and that by the time I get there, that decision then is just already made. And same thing with the health. You know, if we just default to what we feel like in that moment, we're always going to default to the more easy, processed, not as healthy food. But if we've already made that decision, we've already grocery shopped for it, then it's just, it's easier. It removes that friction, like you were saying, for eating healthier as well. For sure. And, and it's like, you know, they say that sort of willpower is a, is a bit like a muscle, it gets fatigued. And when you have a busy day, maybe you're, you're working or you're looking after kids or whatever it is, you're getting stressed out. And by the time you get to dinner time, yeah, you're just going to reach out for the, the microwave meal, the, the junk food, whatever you can get your hands on. But this takes the decision away. It's already made. You've already got the ingredients. You just go for it. You, and, and for me, like I would feel guilty about the food waste. So I would know if I had the, all the ingredients there, I would cook them. Right. Yes. So you're, you're just making it easier on yourself to make the right decision when it comes down to that. And that's not saying that I never am tired at the end of the day and say, you know what, forget this, we're going to go out to eat. That happens sometimes and that's okay. But it just makes it easier for this to become the habit versus saying every night, okay, forget it. We're going to hit the drive through. For sure. So I, I kind of, would like to know, like, how has this, how would you say this method has changed your, like, busy mom life? Well, yeah, like I said, the, the time, it makes such a big difference. And it used to be that meal planning was something I would dread. I didn't like doing it. I found it exhausting, kind of that decision fatigue, like you're talking about. When you're a parent, you have so many different decisions you're making every single minute, most of them not even for you. <laughs> and you're just constantly in this decision-making mode. And when it comes to meal planning, it's just one more decision. So it has definitely helped with the decision fatigue. If my husband asks me, hey, let's have somebody over this night of the week, what are we making? I can look at my calendar and I can 
see that. I don't have to think, oh, what do I wanna make? That it just removes that extra stress. And it also saves so much time. I don't have to get my cookbooks out every week and look through Pinterest and just take that time to do it because it is already done. So yeah, it takes a bit of time to do when I do it once a year, usually in December, but then it's done and I can check that off my list for the whole next year. And honestly, if I wanted to, I've actually had a lot of people ask me this in the comments on my videos when I'm doing this, why don't you just recycle it? Why don't you just do the same thing every year? And you totally could. Nobody would know the difference if you just copied every single thing the exact same in your calendar. The reason that I don't is we're kind of foodies in our family. We like food, we like a lot of different food, and depending on the year, also with our schedules, sometimes things change. I used to have a new meal night every Wednesday night because I had a little bit more time that night and we like trying new food and we wanted our kids mm -hmm. to get used to trying new food. But now with the ages that our kids are and the different activities that they're in, I just don't have time to do that right now. So with different changes and different seasons that you're in, sometimes you have to adjust things a little bit, but if you wanted to, you could absolutely just recycle this and you just did your meal planning for forever if you really wanted to, so. Yeah, I, and I think you, what you said there is is really powerful. Like food should be something, in my view, that, that you really enjoy, that's, that should be like a, a real pleasure in, in life. And I think that, if you come at it in that way, then yeah, meal planning should not be something that you, that you dread. And I think a lot of us do, right? And we, we worry about the budget, we worry about the time it's gonna take, and it, and it just becomes this really uh, nasty kind of thing that we have to face at the start of each week. But it, it really doesn't need to be. With a little bit of, you know, you set aside a little bit of time once a year and your meal planning is done. I mean, yeah, really, really cool. Now, you're obviously meal planning for an entire family and particularly i mean i know and i think you know that that getting all your nutrients on a plant-based diet is not difficult but some people might might be concerned about it so what would you say is your approach for sort of you know making sure that everyone is getting getting their nutrition and, and staying on top of their health um i would say as long as you are putting a fair amount of variety and variety you can define just as how many colors you're eating in a week. Are you getting, in addition you know, to the beans and the rice and kind of those more bland colored food, are you getting the, the reds and the oranges and the purples and the greens and all of those things? And I think just like I look at meal planning as kind of a big picture the whole year, I, I look at each week kind of that way as well. If I have a busy night and I need to just get something quick and simple and maybe the kids just eat beans and rice or beans and cornbread that nice, that night because we're running out the door to something else. I don't stress about it because I know the next night, maybe we're going to have a big salad or something like that. So I look at each week and because each week has every single theme night in it, I know that they're going to get a fair amount of variety. And with that variety comes the health as well. So yeah, I don't stress too much about making sure every single meal has this many vegetables and this many fruit and this many grains because I know that they will get all of those things through the week. And then with having kids, that's another thing that a lot of people will say, well, my kid is picky, I can't get them to eat X or Y or whatever it is. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with that. One is I only cook one meal. I don't cook, even if they say, I don't like this, I don't want this, then I say, okay, well, you must not be that hungry. You're welcome to either hang out with us or get yourself ready for bed. Those are your two options, but I'm not cooking anything else. If you finish the plate that you have here and we do reasonable portions, you know, it's nothing crazy, but finish what you have. You can have an apple or something like that after, but you need to at least eat what's been prepared for you. Um, so, so that's definitely a way to make sure they're getting their nutrition. If anytime they don't like something, you give them something else, they're not going to learn to like it. Um, and another thing with that is I, I give them choices within the healthiness. So let's say we do this meal called haystacks, which is beans and chips, and you can put rice or quinoa with it, and you put lettuce and cabbage and carrots and, and any kind of vegetables you want to have. So depending on the vegetables that are there, if maybe there are seven that I have out, I'll say choose five. You don't have to have them all, but choose the ones that you would like. And you can give them choices within the healthy food that sometimes even 
if they have the choice, they will choose something that they may not have otherwise versus if I'm saying, well, you have to have one of everything. So you can kind of give them a little bit of, of freedom and autonomy within the healthy food. And if they don't have another option, they will learn to eat the healthy food as well. Yeah, I mean, I like that little bit of give and take and that little bit of choice, I think makes probably a lot of difference. But I think what you, you said there really makes sense because one of the beauties, I think, of a, of a you know, plant-rich diet is that plants are so nutritionally rich that, that it, it's not actually a struggle. As long as you, as you say, you're getting a bit of variety, you have different, different meals throughout the week, you're going to get everything just because the foods that you're, that you're choosing to eat that is on your plate are giving you what you need. Uh, yeah, so, so it's really not something that you need to yet yeah, stress that much about, I think. Now we've obviously talked about the sort of nutritional side, but but how do you balance people's preferences? Like we, within a family, everyone likes different things. And so when you're coming up with this plan, how do you kind of balance what everyone likes? Well, there's a few different ways that you can do this. Um, if your kids are really little and they may not fully understand theme nights and things like that, you can just ask them, hey, do you have a favorite food? And see if you can mix that favorite food into one of the theme nights or putting that favorite food as a weekly theme night. It could be the same every single week if you wanna have a really simple theme night as well. Uh, so that's one way to do it when your kids are younger. If they're older, you can let your kids choose a theme night and ev they know every Friday they get to have their favorite meals or every Thursday or whatever it is. Um, something else you can do is if you have maybe teenagers or preteens, you can let them choose a night that they're going to cook and they choose the theme night as well. And with spouses also, you can let them choose a theme night. Actually last year, if you watched the meal planning video that I did, I was not feeling very inspired with picking theme nights. So I let my husband pick them all and I actually didn't even look at them until I was on camera and then I had to figure it out from there. So you can do a lot of things to get your family involved with this and get them excited about it. And I think that's another good way to help if they have been picky to give them some say in it and let them know that you are taking their preferences into account um, with the meal planning as well. That totally makes sense. And it's something, you know, just out of interest, I kind of make a bit of a, a study of like human behavior and how we make decisions and that sort of thing. And it is always something that, that if you, you know, if you give someone responsibility for something and you say, look, this is your call, you've got to make a decision here. Suddenly they're so much more invested in it, right? And, and especially with kids, right? Because you're giving them that little bit of autonomy and, and you know, they don't need to know that you, you could overrule them if you want, but, but it's quite nice to, to give them that and to, to let them start making those decisions and, and get them bought into it. And especially if plant-based eating is something new to you, I often say on my channel, don't, you don't have to go 100%. You know, maybe if you just choose three nights a week to do plant-based and still mix in some of the other favorites and things like that, it can be a little bit easier on kids, especially versus saying, okay, well now we're gonna eat completely different and you just have to deal with it. To, to give a little bit as well as saying, we do need to eat healthier also. And I have found with my kids too, if they help cook a meal, even if it's something that they may not have liked, otherwise they're much more likely to taste and enjoy and they find a sense of pride in it. They will tell anyone at the table, I made this, even if it's just a salad and they are bought into it. And often when they're cooking, they will taste things a little bit in a little less stressful of a situation. It's not the parents sitting there saying, eat the food. They can taste it and go, oh, that's actually not so bad versus it becoming a power struggle as well. So definitely getting the kids in the kitchen will help their preferences become more healthy as well. For sure, yeah, and, and it's just that. I think cooking and food is this act of, of creativity, right? And, and it's something that we, could and should take pride in. I, I think, you know, when I create a meal and I, and I put it out on the table and, and, and guests or family or whoever t taste it, of course I'm like looking at their face and, you know, t it's because I think it's something that, that it's, it's a wonderful thing for us to, to bond together and, and, you know, for us to sit around at a dinner table, it's a really wonderful thing. And so getting kids involved with that early on, getting that sense of that ownership and giving them the skills that they're going to need later in life because we're all going to have to eat forever, right? So, right. so yeah, it's, it's a really, really cool. Okay, so if 
our listeners want to kind of do this uh, meal planning themselves, where can they get the sort of template that you've made for that? Yeah, so we'll put a link to the easy meal planning checklist. We can put it in the description and I can put a comment down below as well with the link as well. And they can grab that and it will go through every step that I talked about today. And like I said, if you want detailed videos for every single step of the process and you want to do it alongside with me, um, I can we could put the links to the videos as well there. And uh, you can check that out definitely go and check those out they will be super super helpful well i just want to thank you so much for your time today cassie i really mean that it's been uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and i think i've i've certainly learned a bit and, and definitely want to try and implement some more of these meal planning techniques you've spoken about here well thank you so much for having me it's been a lot of fun please do not forget to pick up the link in the description below for that easy meal planning checklist. I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.